Hello there, welcome to Craft with Fee and welcome to this week's instructional video as part of the Children Lovers group on Facebook. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking that little um, subscribe button and if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video, you'll need to click the little bell. Okay, so this um, is a little fabric basket that we're making today. It is challenge number 12 in the group. It's um, by request. I had a, a lady ask if I could do a little thread basket that she could take along to her sewing retreat days. And the idea of this is you can throw it in your bag and then when you get to your sewing retreat, you can pop it up and put all your rubbish in it. Um, and of course, if you've been making all the other bits and pieces for our little sewing, our sewing sets, this would be um, another little item that you could put in with it. Now, I've made mine without um, any wadding in it. Obviously wadding would make it a stiffer little basket. So if you wanted to use this project um, to put a gift in, you could put chocolates in it, you could put soaps in it and wrap it up into some cellophane. You can really do anything with these little baskets. Um, you may then find that you need some stabiliser in between the fabric. For mine, I've just used fabric with nothing else. It still does sit up nicely like that. Um, but it's entirely up to you. So it's got a nice little boxed bottom. Um, and you'll see when I show you how to put it together, how easy it is to do to do the box bottom. And of course, the top here is just simply folded over. Um, now, the measurements that I'm going to give you are to make this size, but you could make the measurement smaller to make a smaller one or larger, obviously, to make a larger one. You could make a whole, a whole series of them in all different sizes. I was also thinking that uh, I might make a very large one um, because I have a new grandchild coming very soon and I thought it would be a nice... Um, gift for her to put some of his toiletries and things um, in on his little nappy change table so I thought that might be nice but anyway I'll show you how to make it it's very simple you're just going to need two pieces of your outer fabric so this is my I'm using the same fabric again so this is my outer fabric and it is um, six and a half inches square so that was how I just cut it I cut a six and a half inch strip and sliced it down down the middle so I've got two six and a half inch squares now um, you also need two six and a half inch squares for your lining and I'm going to use exactly the same fabric once again so we're going to put both sets with right sides together um, now to do that obviously you just lay one on top of the other and I'm just going to pin mine there just like that just to hold it together for the moment and then we're going to do the same with the outer fabric as well. Now we don't want to put any pins at this stage down towards the bottom because we're now going to draw some little squares in the corners which will be the bits that we cut off. So our little corners are going to be one and a half inch square. So what you need to do is to use your ruler um, and you can see here that I have the one and a half inch mark there and then we're just going to draw that square on the corner and then we'll do the same with the opposite corner so these are the little corners which will be at the bottom of your little bucket fabric thread bin whatever you want to call it so if you've got directional fabric make sure that those um, are drawn on the bottom so just do that Now, if you're making quite a large bucket, you might want to make your little corners maybe two inch. And if you're making it smaller, maybe drop it down to an inch because that will determine how big your bottom is on your bag. You can play with the measurement. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's not too difficult. So then what we're going to do is just cut those little corners out. Now, there are lots of other ways to do boxed bottoms on bags and buckets and things like that. Um, we have a lot of beginner sewers in the group, so I'm showing you um, the easiest way. And this is going to be the easiest way for you to be able to match your seams as well, in my opinion. That's just the way that I like to, to show people when um, I'm teaching beginners mostly. Okay, now I'm going to use my ruler in a moment to draw my sew lines. Now, obviously, you won't need to do that if you're using a quarter inch foot on your machine. You won't need to do it, but I'm doing it just for the purposes of the video. 
so that you can see where I'm going to take it to the machine and sew. So we're going to sew all the way along the bottom. This is the outer piece. And then we're going to sew all the way up that side. And then we're going to sew all the way up this side. Now if you're asking, I'm using a friction pen. These um, are suitable for fabric if you are hiding it in the fact that it's removable with heat. If you're using it on paper, for instance, let me just show you. So if you did a squiggle on paper like that, you can use the end of the friction pen and the heat will actually remove the pen. So it disappears. Um, and so obviously it will iron off um, when you are making something on fabric. But it has been known to come back in colder weather. So you wouldn't want to use it somewhere where it's going to be um, seen. But when you're using it for this type of purpose, absolutely fine. Okay, now on the lining piece, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to leave an opening on one side of the lining. So you can see there I've left a little opening and that is going to be where we turn it uh, at the end when we when we start putting it together. So, uh, so, so, <laughs> I'm going to take this over to the machine now and sew it. So as I said, we're going to go down both sides of the outer piece and across the bottom. And then on the lining piece, we're going to leave that little opening there because that's where we're going to turn it later on. So I'll take mine off to the machine and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, back from the sewing machine. So we have, I'm just going to show you on the lining piece the next stage, but we need to do this to both. So what we need to do now is you'll see that we've got um, our sides sewn down and our bottom sewn down. And we're going to fold the bottom to meet the side like that, so where that cut is that you've made. And then we're just going to run the seam so that they go both directions, if you can tell there that what I've done. So just lay the seams on top of each other and you'll feel them lay flat. You'll feel them lay in against one another. So hopefully you can see there what I mean. So just stick a pin in that to hold it in place and then you'll need another pin on the other side of the bottom there like that and then there as well. And then you're going to run the sewing machine along there. So you're going to start a quarter of an inch in. So I'll just grab my pen so I can show you. So you're going to run your stitching line all the way down through there. So you're going to start a quarter of an inch in and you'll do that on both sides of um, the lining and the outer. Now when you're doing the other side you've got to make sure that this seam here is laying the same direction as the opposite side. So we don't want to go in opposite directions. We want that seam there to lay the same way. So once again, we're just going to lay the seams alongside one another just so that they match and you can feel when, when you've got them lying in opposite directions, you can actually feel it lay flat. There's no bump there. That is um, how you know that you've matched that seam really well. You can feel, you can feel it. Just take that extra time just to match them up. And then... As I said, we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and you're just going to sew straight across there. And then that will give you your little square bottom. So you do that to the lining and you can also do it to the outer fabric and then we'll come back. Okay, so we now have two little bottoms there. So we're going to leave the um, lining turned in that way, but the outer we're going to turn back to the right way. And you can see there that we've got a beautiful squared up bottom. Now you can of course try and pattern match if you want. I haven't bothered for this one because um, I just wanted it to be a very very quick little video for you. So what we're going to do now, we've got these, we're going to put our in, our outer inside our inner. So you've then got the right sides um, together like that. So that is how, that is how it's going to look. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to match up these seams here on the side and we're going to make sure that that one runs in the same direction as it does from the bottom. So then we're going to match the seams as we did at the corners, there like so. And then we're going to put a pin in it and I've left my pins at the sewing machine. Well done Fiona. Sorry about that. 
Okay, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll just do that again. We'll just match those seams. So make sure they're going in opposite directions. And then we're going to pop a pin in there. We're going to do the same to the opposite side. So we're just going to match them. As I said, you can feel when you get a bit of experience and if or if you're already a sewer, you'll know all about it. But if you're still learning, you, you'll be able to feel, um, I've got mine a little bit high, you'll be able to feel where um, that seam, when, when it lies against one another, you can actually feel it sort of slot, slot in, if you know what I mean. Okay, so once you've got a pin in either side, then the, um, the rest of the top of your bag will just go. You can see there that that just goes, but we're going to pop a couple of pins in there anyway, just to to keep it straight. So that when you go to the machine to sew it, it's nice and straight. So you can do that. So then, when, when you've got all your pins in there, you're going to go around the whole edge um, with a quarter inch seam. So just so you're going to sew it all together. Then we're going to turn it inside out by using our turning point here on the lining. So you can see there, that's my turning point. Um, and then we'll take it to the ironing board and do a bit of ironing. Okay, so excuse my um, ironing mat. This is the one I use for all applique and things. So it has a bit of glue and things on it, but that's okay. So I've turned it in and I've also um, ironed flat the little seam there and I've stitched it closed. Now you can do that by machine or you can do that by hand. I've just used it on the machine. So then we're just going to push the lining back into the body of our little our little bucket there. And then we're just all we're going to do now is we're just going to line that up like that. And we're just going to use a hot iron just to give us that nice crisp seam at the top. And just take your time just to make sure you've got it nicely folded so that it's right on that stitched line. It's um, a very simple little project, this one, but um, one that you can just whip up in no time at all. As I said, perfect for gifts. You can use it for packaging for gifts even. As I said, if you want to gift some chocolates or cookies or anything like that, it would be the perfect accompaniment. And, of course, it's something usable that the um, recipient can use afterwards. Now, if you want to give it a little bit of a, um iron while you're at it, you can. My iron doesn't fit in there very well. But I should have my little clover one out, shouldn't I? Um, yeah, just give it a little bit of an iron. And then all you've got to do is to fold down the cuff. So just decide how far down you want it to go. It doesn't, doesn't really matter um, what you decide on. I've got a bit of a loose thread there. So, yeah, it completely depends on what you want to do there. So I might just go up that far maybe and then of course you just iron it again to give you that nice crisp edge so just trying to make sure mine's even I think that's about right so yeah just give it a little iron all the way around there we go it's all done so we have a beautiful little basket there it's um it's a very very cute little project um as i said very easy to put together uh very adaptable for different sizes so but if you need a hand with the measurements and things if you want to go a bit bigger or a bit smaller don't hesitate to contact contact me i'm more than happy to to help you out with that so Anyway, I look forward to seeing all your beautiful colour combinations in the group this week. Um, and as I said, if you need any help with anything, just, just get in touch with me. That's absolutely fine. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you next week. See ya.